Welcome to this YSL tutorial. This is just a quick follow-up to a video I made last week on how you pass arguments by ref and by val in Excel VBA. This is designed to just clarify a point I, I made in the earlier video about when you use parentheses to enclose your argument lists. So we're going to start with a really quick recap of what by ref and by val mean. We won't take too long to do that because we talked about that in the previous video. Then we're going to explain how you can call procedures and show you a couple of different techniques for doing that. And then the main part of the video is explaining when you need to use parentheses and what effect the parentheses can have when you wrap your arguments in them. So let's get started. Just to recap what we did in the previous video, here's the simple example we used to demonstrate what by ref and by val mean. So I'm going to step through my original subroutine here called set and number using the F8 key. And in here what we do is declare a variable called original num and then assign a value to it of 5. Then we simply print out the value of that variable to the immediate window, just to reassure ourselves that we did indeed assign the value correctly. And then we pass that value into another procedure called increase a number. So we're passing the value 5 into the increase a number subroutine, passing it into the number to increase parameter. So when we do that, we then increase the value of number to increase, so we add 1 to it, and then we print out its value, which unsurprisingly becomes 6, and then we return to the original procedure and then print out the final value of the original num variable, which also in this case happens to be 6. The reason that it retains the original uh, or retains the changes made to the value in the second procedure is because by default in VBA arguments are passed by ref and the previous video explains that when you pass arguments by ref you're essentially passing a pointer to the same memory address location so it's the same piece of information the same place in memory where the value is being changed rather than a copy of the value so adding the words by ref makes no difference to the end result if I just clear out the contents of the immediate window and step through the, the pair of procedures again we'll see exactly the same end result where the original num retains the changes made to it We then saw that we could modify this behavior by telling the argument to be passed by val rather than by ref. So if I change by ref to by val and then clear the contents of the immediate window again and then step through the original subroutine using the F8 key. So again, the starting point is the same. We see an original number of 5. We then pass that value into the number to increase parameter and then its value will be increased to 6. And then this time when we come back to the original procedure, original num won't have been changed by the increase in number subroutine, when we pass it by val, we're effectively passing a copy of the value. So it's modifying a value stored in a different space in memory rather than the original. So those are the two options for passing arguments in VBA, either by ref or by val, and by ref is the default. The focus of this video is on the syntax you use when you call another procedure. So this is the single line we've used to call the increase and in number procedure. And we've done it in the simplest way possible, where we state the name of the procedure and then immediately afterwards write out any values we want to pass into it. So we've got a single value passed into the number to increase parameter. Another way I showed you in the previous video, and we've mentioned this a few times in, in this series, is you can also use the call keyword when you want to call another procedure. Now the only difference this makes is that if you want to use the call keyword, you must wrap up any arguments you're passing to the procedure in a set of parentheses or round brackets. And just to prove that, if I click onto any other line before I, um, before I try to execute it, you'll see that the entire line turns red, indicating that there's a syntax error. So that tells me that I must enclose the argument list in a set of parentheses, otherwise the procedure call can't work. So if I just clear the contents of the immediate window and then just execute the entire set of procedures, everything will work as intended. So we're passing the information by val, meaning that the original num doesn't inherit the changes. Now the part of the previous video that I need to clarify was when I said that when you don't use the call keyword, you mustn't use parentheses to enclose the argument list. So if I remove the parentheses around the argument list and remove the call keyword, then again, this is the correct syntax to use. The confusion arose when one of the viewers discovered that you can indeed legitimately put a set of parentheses around your argument list when you don't use the call keyword. Syntactically, that's a valid statement. If I click away from that line, you'll see it doesn't turn red. And again, if I just clear the contents of the immediate window and I execute this, the same result occurs. So when I'm passing by val and I wrap my, my argument list in parentheses without using the call keyword, the results are the same. Where this becomes potentially more confusing, however, 
is if you're trying to pass arguments by ref. So if I change by val back to by ref, and remember by ref should mean that when we execute the procedures, I end up with 566, so the original number will inherit the changes. So if I clear the contents of the immediate window again, and then execute the set of procedures, we'll find out that we get instead 565. So this is where the confusion arose, and this led to a question from, from somebody who viewed the video, what's going on here when you use parentheses without using the call keyword? It's probably easier for me to describe the syntax rules if we create a procedure which has multiple parameters. So to do that, let's insert a new module. You can do this just in a brand new blank workbook. You won't need any data to do this. So in a brand new blank module, what we're going to do is create two procedures. The first one will be uh, called set numbers. And all this one's going to do is going to have several variables. It's going to have dim num1 as integer, comma num2 as integer, and finally num3 as integer. And all this one's going to do is set or assign values to each of those three variables. It's going to say num1 equals, uh, let's go for 1, why not, and then num2 equals 2, and then num3 equals 3. And I'd just like to have a debug.print statement that lists out all those three values. So I'm going to say debug.print, and then I'm going to say num1, comma num2, comma num3. So if I just clear the contents of the immediate window, all we'll see if I do that is those three values printed out, 1, 2, and 3. What I'd now like to do is create a procedure which will accept three numbers and increase the value of each one. So let's create another subroutine just below this one, which I'm going to call increase numbers. If we can spell that properly. Increase numbers. I'll get there eventually. And I'm going to declare three parameters in here. Now the default is by ref, but I'm going to explicitly state by ref just to make things clearer. So I'm going to say by ref, uh, I'm going to put par1 as in parameter1 as integer. And then by ref par2 as integer, and finally, you can probably guess, by ref par3 as integer. Now the sole job of this procedure is to add 1 to the value of each of its, of the values passed into its parameters, so I'm going to say par1 equals par1 plus 1, and then the same thing for par2 and 3, so I'm just going to copy and paste that actually, because it will probably be slightly quicker just to modify the numbers here rather than type them all out again from scratch. And then of course, we, just to prove that they have indeed increased the values of those numbers, we're going to say debug.print par1, comma par2, comma par3. What I can now do is make a call to this increase numbers procedure from the original set numbers procedure. So let's have a new line. I'm going to do this in the simplest way possible. I'm going to just state the name of the procedure. I'm going to press control and space and look for the increase numbers procedure and then simply pass in num1, comma, num2, comma, num3. The final thing I'd like to do is print out the final values of numbers 1, 2, and 3. So I'm just going to copy and paste the debug.print line as the last statement in that subroutine. So let's just change the size of the immediate window slightly so that we can hopefully see what a little clearly, more clearly what's going on, then clear the contents of the immediate window. And then it shouldn't be too much of a surprise as we're passing by ref that when we run this using all the standard syntax rules, if I just run the entire set of procedures, I get 1, 2, and 3, 2, 3, and 4 for the increase values, and then the final values have inherited the changes made in the increase numbers procedure, so these will become 2, 3, and 4 as well. So, back to this odd situation that we saw in the previous example, where you saw that you could wrap a set of parentheses around the argument list, even though you're not using the call keyword. If you try to do that in this example, however, and then try to enter that instruction, you'll find you get a syntax error. And that's because the syntax rules don't allow you to wrap a set of arguments in a set of parentheses. It worked in the previous example because there was only one parameter to pass a value to. But what's actually happening here what this syntax rule actually allows you to do is wrap each individual argument in a set of parentheses. So if I wrap a set of parentheses around each individual argument that I'm passing to each parameter, then you'll see that the syntax rules allow this, so you don't get a line highlighted in red. The effect of this, if I clear the contents of the immediate window, you may be able to predict this at this point. If I execute this, even though I'm passing my arguments by ref, and I've explicitly said that, 
If I run the entire set of procedures, you can hopefully see at the bottom the final set of information, the final values of num1, 2 and 3 haven't inherited the changes made to them. So wrapping a single argument in a set of parentheses essentially allows you to pass it by val even though you've declared the parameter by ref. So it's designed to provide you with a little bit more flexibility in the way you pass information between different procedures. The confusion arises because when you're only passing a single value to a single parameter, this looks as though you've enclosed the entire argument list in a set of parentheses, but that's not true. All you've done is wrap a single individual argument in a set of parentheses, which as I say is slightly easier to demonstrate when you have multiple parameters in a subroutine's definition. The same syntax rules hold true whether you're using the call keyword or not. So if I try to add the call keyword to the call to increase numbers without wrapping the entire argument list in a set of parentheses, this provides me with the syntax error. But if I do follow the syntax rules for call, if you're using the call keyword, you must wrap the entire argument list in a set of parentheses. This is perfectly valid. So again, we're calling the increase numbers procedure, which has by ref parameters, but because I've wrapped up each individual argument in a set of parentheses, they're now passed by val instead. So again, if I clear the contents of the immediate window and then run the entire set of procedures again, we'll see that the arguments have been passed by val rather than by ref. If I do want to pass the arguments by ref, all I would need to do is take away the parentheses around each individual argument, and then again clear the contents of the immediate window and then run the entire set of procedures and we see that once again the arguments have been passed by ref and inherited the changes in the original set of numbers. This is one of those unfortunately confusing syntax rules in VBA and it's not the only one but it's probably the most common one you'll encounter and you may well have encountered it previously even if you haven't been passing arguments to subroutines that you've created. The most common example we see on training courses that we deliver is with the message box. So if I were to insert another new module just to demonstrate what I mean by that and create a quick little subroutine uh, called messages. When we start teaching message boxes on training courses it's purely to show a message box on screen to show some kind of information. Uh, I can't bear to say hello world. I um, know uh, I say I like cake. So ordinarily even though the tooltip that's displayed when you call the message box function uses a set of parentheses to enclose the argument list or the parameter list there, you shouldn't use parentheses to do so. So when you just display a message box on screen, you write out the argument list without enclosing them in parentheses. So if I were to execute that subroutine, there we go, Excel likes cake. If I do use parentheses, however, because I'm only passing a single argument to the message box function, then the syntax rules allow for that. So if I say message box I like cake with parentheses, it has exactly the same effect. If, however, I try to add in more arguments, so for instance, after I like cake, I type in a comma and I say, I don't know, VB information to display an information symbol on the message and maybe change the title as well. Um, I can't think of anything sensible here, so cake message will have to do. But the syntax rules, because I'm passing multiple arguments in a single set of parentheses, the syntax rules don't allow that. I can make this syntax valid, again as we did before, by just wrapping up each individual argument in a set of parentheses, and that will solve that problem. So there we go, now that's a syntactically valid statement. So technically what you're doing there is you're, you're overriding the call to the message box function, so if those arguments were passed by ref by default, you're now passing them by val. With a message box, it's completely irrelevant, because a message box function hard-coded into the VBA language doesn't make any changes to the values you pass into it. So regardless of how you pass those values in, you'll never see any changes when if you try to reuse them later on in the same procedure. So it's kind of a redundant thing here. As I say, the most likely or the most common reason we see this becoming an issue on training courses is when somebody tries to wrap up an entire parameter list for a message box in a single set of parentheses because they've seen that it will work annoyingly, somewhat inconsistently it appears to begin with, because it works for a single parameter. 
The final confusing thing about message box in particular is that the rules change once again if you're not just trying to display a message box on screen but you're trying to return some kind of result from it. So in this case we shouldn't use parentheses to enclose the argument list. But if we were trying to show another message box then maybe that asked the user a question so and then we tried to store the value of that message box or the return value of the message box in a variable. So if I say declare a variable uh, called result as VB MSG box result, and then I try to say result equals pardon, result equals message box. This time, because we're trying to return the value from the message box, you can see that the message box has a return value. It's technically a function, um, which is one of the two types of methods in VBA. So as VB message box result tells you that it returns something. So without the parentheses this time, if I try to just say, uh, for instance, do you like cake? And then display maybe VB yes no buttons on the message box without the parentheses around the argument list. Now that syntax is invalid. So if I try to wrap the entire argument list inside a set of parentheses, this is almost the equivalent of using the call keyword when you call your own subroutines. So with the parentheses, that is now a syntactically valid statement. Once again, it's completely redundant, completely irrelevant. You don't need to do this. It will have absolutely no effect. But another piece of valid syntax would be to wrap each individual argument inside a set of parentheses within the set of parentheses which encloses the entire argument list. Phew. So um, hopefully that's cleared up a bit of the confusion around using round brackets or parentheses around arguments. Um, hopefully that hasn't confused you any more than you already were. Thanks for watching, see you next time. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.